Mmm. Oh my goodness. Wow. Good morning. It is another gorgeous, beautiful, sunny, snowy day here in Midland, Ontario. And we're coming at you live from Quench Studios. <laughs> Yeah, it's just another gorgeously bright sunny day and also another day of a lot of hard work and a lot of craziness. So come, come along with us and we will show you what it's like to run a business full time as your only income. If that's something you're into, keep watching. Let me quickly introduce myself. I am Jerrica, owner and creator of Quench. And for the month of December, we are going to do a small business vlogmas where you get to see the behind the scenes of our small bath bomb and soap business. It's gonna be really interesting. Usually I make a lot of how I make my stuff videos. I give a lot of business advice videos, but I think the day in the life videos are sometimes the most telling as they give you guys a really realistic view of what it's like when the orders are actually coming in and you're actually taking off. So I don't know a lot of stuff makers that do this. So come along on the ride with us. You're bound to learn something, something. <laughs> and because we are so busy, these vlog type videos are actually some of the easiest ones for me to edit. So helps me out too. I can get this content out faster. So all that other content where I sit down and talk a lot about what I do and all my business tips, that'll probably come later in January, but in December it will be a month full of behind the scenes vlogmas. As I mentioned, today is another really busy day. I am cutting the soap that I made yesterday. If you missed that video, I'll link it up here, but I made water orchid and grapefruit soap, and that is ready to come out of the oven. I keep them in the oven to uh, gel. But yeah, I have to cut that soap. I have to paint my peppermint candy, candy cane bath bombs today. We have to get more orders out. And also I'm going to taste test my new lip balm flavor. I mentioned in my other video that I was creating a new flavor. So we're gonna test that out. It's the mango, orange, and cinnamon flavor. So hopefully it turned out good. And then after that, yeah, it's just, it'll be another Crazy day. I get asked a lot how I prevent soda ash. And fun fact, back in the early days of my soap making, I used to get a ton of soda ash. All of my loaves were covered with soda ash. And what soda ash is, is a fine layer of ash that settles on the surface of your soap after you've created it. So I thought, you know what? There's no way I'm gonna be able to prevent this. I'm good with having soda ash on my soap until I made this one change. The secret to getting rid of soda ash is a water discount. That really is all it is. You, you gotta have a steep water discount. I don't know what it is about having a lot of water in your recipe that results in soda ash. Not sure about the chemistry behind that. I do know once I reduced the amount of water in my soap recipe, it was like night and day. I, I went from this soap to this soap. <laughs> and as you can see, I don't get any soda ash lovely it's smooth looks great that's literally the only thing that worked for me I know that people like to use steam they like to 
rinse off their soda ash by putting their soap underwater. Too much work. Try a water discount and be amazed by how smooth and ash-free your soaps are. Now, if you are still getting soda ash, try using a little less water. Make these incremental changes and then see whether or not it results in soap that looks like this. All I know is that it worked for me. Lot of questions about where I get my soap cutter from and I'm really sorry I can't tell you guys the answer because this is a gift from my husband he gifted this to me a couple years ago and it's been a game changer I love how my soaps have turned out every soap is the perfect size and this can adjust right here so you can have it as thick or as thin as you want but yeah he doesn't remember where he got it from which is so sad but if you guys are thinking about whether or not you guys need a soap cutter my answer to that is yes. You want the soap bars to be all even and all the same length, so investing in a soap cutter is one of those things that will definitely elevate your brand and your business. Cutting things by hand and measuring it out, I tried that for a while and it's, no, it doesn't, <laughs> it's not great. So invest in one of these, it'll save you time. Your soap will look so much better because of it. And I'm sorry, I can't, I can't tell you guys the company where this is from, but you can find a lot of soap cutters on Etsy. And I'm pretty sure if you Google uh, wire cutter, wire soap cutter, something will come up. Look how beautiful this soap turns out. I just absolutely love it. I love how it looks like fire. Um, we call this our grapefruit sunrise soap and it actually looks like a sunrise. It's so beautiful. I can't get over it. And if you're wondering about soap scents, I feel that having a citrus in your soap line is an absolute must. You have to have something citrusy because people love bathing in things that smell like citrus. So grapefruit is a, a great choice. You can go with Satsuma, lime, orange, anything of that sort. I think it's because it's really brightening, it smells really good, and it's just, just a great scent to have in your shower. And again, I think I mentioned before, we use ruby grapefruit from Windy Point as our scent for our grapefruit sunrise soap. And yeah, it soaps really well too. It's uh, It doesn't accelerate, um, you can work with it, but it also helps me get these beautiful texture tops as well. And these are calendula petals at the top, if you guys were wondering. What are you up to today? Just painting these uh, candy cane bat bombs. The lavender ones already have the petals on it, so they do not need paint. Yeah. Nice and hard. Yeah, they're actually a little stuck in there. That's not common for this kind of bath, there we go, this bath bomb tray. So beautiful. They smell so good too. They're really sweet like candy, but also really fresh with the mint. So yeah, these are huge crowd pleasers. Lavender, people just love lavender. I actually really like this bath bomb too. And the color turned out really good. So nice. That's really popular. Yeah. I feel like you made a batch like three days ago. I know, I'm constantly making lavender bath bombs. They're just so, so popular. And what Kale's doing over here is he's mixing mica with 100, or sorry, 99% alcohol. And what that does is it, oops, <laughs> careful. It um, gives the mica a medium to be dispersed in without activating the bath bombs. So if you are painting your bath bombs, mix mica with alcohol to get it fluid, and then we use a dropper 
to drop the color onto the bath bombs, which we will show you in a second. How beautiful <laughs> I just really love this blue color and this is azure blue from Windy Point and look how gorgeous that translates into your soap I'm really gonna miss this soap it's so so beautiful and so eye-catching but yeah kind of sad so we only have about um, what do you 21 bars of this left and these won't be available until a month from now because we're curing them So if you want to know what these smell like I suggest you go to one of our websites and buy them because after they're gone They're gone and this is one of our really really good ones. I'm really sad to see this one go, but You gotta do what you gotta do <laughs> And if you're wondering about these soap ends that I've cut off, I don't throw them out. I don't we actually sell them and how you sell these guys, or how we sell them, I should say, is that we will cut them in half and then we will bundle them up and sell them as a soap bundle, like a soap sampler bundle. And people love that and buy them. So if you are wondering, what do I do with these scraps? Don't throw them out. Um, I would even say don't even use them. <laughs> Just cut them up to be little soap samplers and sell them because you are, because these are definitely worth something to people that don't want to commit to a full size bar and are curious to try out your soap and want maybe a variety. Purple day at Quench Studios. Again? <laughs> okay. It's two in one week. I think last Friday. Yeah. Was purple day. <laughs> I don't know. I would call this I would call this blue. I don't know. I don't what? know if you want to get into that. Your shirt? That debate. Okay, that's clearly a purple shirt. It's clearly purple. I think I think we actually had this discussion before. Okay, what do you guys think? Blue or purple? Because this is clearly a purple shirt. Even as you hold it up to this purple bath bomb, it's, they're obviously in the same color family. That's the same color family, yeah. <laughs> I would say this is a mix between a, like a secondary violet. and tertiary, tertiary color. Isn't there, <laughs> isn't there a color like that? It's indigo. Is, that in, is it indigo, maybe? 
could be, yep. <laughs> up behind Kale and noticing <laughs> how nice his hair looks. And uh, Kale, what, what have you been doing to your hair? It's I've different. recently started using the Quench conditioner bars. Ooh. Now, I've always used the shampoo bars. Those are really nice. There's no question about those, but my hair has always been short enough to where I don't really use conditioner. I don't think I've used conditioner since I was a teenager. <laughs> and then uh, I just realized that's my hair is getting longer and longer. It's getting too soft and too airy. And I like a little bit of natural kind of grease and texture in there. Yeah. Um, and now the conditioner's providing that, so. Yeah, it looks amazing. It's like shiny and soft, but not greasy. So it's a game changer for you, would you say? I would say, yeah. 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 So long as my hair is this length or longer, you know, I'm gonna continue using the conditioner more. Nice. It is such a beautiful, bright, snowy day outside. Oh my gosh. I love winters like this where it's, the sky is blue and there's a bunch of snow on the ground and it's just <coughs> so cozy and such a beautiful winter wonderland. I love where we live. Um, we live in Midland, Ontario, which is about two hours north from Toronto, but it's just such a beautiful place to live. I love these fluffy marshmallow winters. It's awesome. Love it so much. So here are my solidified lip balms. Oh God. This is the mango orange and cinnamon and this is my peaches and cream and i gotta say the mango orange cinnamon smells amazing i can't wait to try it Whew. so what's left to do with these guys is i take them off of this tray and this is a crafter's choice lip balm tray and it's made out of silicone it's really flexible but i love this thing because it keeps the the lip balms on it which makes for a really easy pour so highly recommend and this is just like a charcuterie tray that i like to dry my lip balms on so i cleaned up all of the mango orange cinnamon lip balms and for every lip balm batch that i do i always have a tester so i can test them out and just from the smell it smells really good so you guys are gonna see my Real reaction to trying for the first time. A little nervous. Mmm. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's so good. So it's not very sweet, and that's probably because the sweetened flavor of mango wasn't very high, the percentage of it and basically the other flavor profiles were created using essential oils so it's not very sweet but it's it has a very fresh pleasant taste let's taste the right word i don't know finish as a very pleasant finish but you can definitely taste the cinnamon you can taste the orange it's it's really lovely it actually tastes a little bit more natural than the the really sweet flavors that we have very very pleased with how this turned out so i have the lip balms all cleaned up and now the only thing left to do is to put the labels on there and these are ready to go just needs a sticker on it and yeah something exciting came in the mail today i got this which is to help me verify my address from google as you guys know this channel just recently got monetized so this will let me get my payouts, because now Google knows that my address is real. This is really cool. It's a little wet because my, it snowed a bunch here and then snow got into my mailbox. So that's kind of sucky, but let's remove the sides. Why is this so hard? Oh my gosh. Cool. Yeah, I got my pin. And so I'll input this into Google AdSense and then that will verify my address and things should be good from there. So yeah, that is today's vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed that. There is a little bit of everything. You got to learn a little bit more about how I cut my soaps and after the soap has, has dried and solidified, you saw that whole process. 
So hopefully you found that interesting and helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And, uh, and if you like that kind of content, please subscribe. All of you subscribers, we are almost at 3,000. That is absolutely mind-blowing and amazing. I am so thankful that you guys find me at least entertaining. Maybe a little bit helpful, I don't know, but I know a lot of you guys are on this growth journey and look to me for inspiration and encouragement. And I want you guys to know that for those of you struggling right now, stick with it, keep evolving and keep learning and you never know where you will be at this time again next year if you just keep going at it and you keep believing in yourself. So with that, I hope you guys continue growing and hustling and I will see you in tomorrow's vlog. Bye guys.